Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the uh, PGA tournament for tomorrow, and the name of it actually escapes me. It's the one from Sea Island, the RSM Classic. All right. So what we're going to do is go through our process of uh, how to build lineups, both from a hand-building perspective and also using SaberSim. And uh, we're going to use two different versions of SaberSim builds. One, we're going to use SaberScore, and one, we're going to use uh, Contest Sims. And again, uh, this is my mission is to, is to give you guys enough as, uh, with respect to learning and education on how to build lineups using the tools available so that you don't have to keep coming back to these videos every week. You know, we have some good tools on, on TrueDFS and honestly, there are good tools throughout the industry. And uh, I just like to share uh, what I feel is a repeatable process. Um, part of my, my, I guess, mission is to be the only person to actually help people learn how to play and not just give you actual plays. So we'll, we'll see. I, I, I feel a little not particularly optimistic that my, my message is, is reaching out to as many people as I want, but that's okay. I'm not going to be upset about it. I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing because this is what people wanted. They want to know how to win. They want to know what I do. And this is what I do anyway. So again, the first thing we want to do is, well, we don't really need to look at the actual golfers here. We're not going to get into the ins and outs of how the projections were derived. We're just going to start right with the, the sheets, which are available on TrueDFS for premium subscribers. Um, and from time to time, I will do a video where I include them. Now, again, these are not going to be final, uh, but this is the process that I use to go ahead and build. And we're going to use this slate as a good example. So really, really simple process with golf. Again, we're not getting into all the ins and outs of where these projections were derived. We have, there's a lot of very sharp models out there. I access all of them. I know which ones to rely on for one thing and which to rely on for others. I back tested them every which way from Sunday. That's even the correct phrasing. Um, and you'll just have to trust me that this is probably the best overall projection set that there is as far as median projections go. Now, again, we're not going to get too into uh, – uh, which the discussion of between two different guys, which is the golfer whose median is more likely to distribute upwards as opposed to in a consistent basis. Um, that's again for another discussion, but um, this is the projection set we're working with. Now you rank these two different ways. One is just by points per dollar and the other is by sheets value score. Now in golf, it's not as big of a difference as some of the other sports. Like in, in a lot of the other sports, Rating guys by points per dollar will give you a completely different set of golfers. Not completely different, but a, a much cheaper set of golfers near the top, where if you rate them by sheets value score, you're definitely going to get the, the, the higher price guys. In golf, it's very, very close. Uh, you're going to get usually the same types of ratings, regardless of which way that you do it. And then on the right, you have ownership projections. Now, these, by the way, the, as we get later in the day or at night, you know, closer to lock, these are going to be a little more skewed. In other words, the, the, the top owned guy is going to be more than 22%, you know, and uh, or excuse me, 23%. It's just the way it is. Um, and we do an update closer to lock to reflect that. But this is how we're working. This is what we're working with now. And when it comes to hand building stuff, it's really important to look at ownership because it breaks ties. Uh, and in some sense, it, it makes like a priority. So like, for example, and I'm just kind of like looking here, um, like you'll see, like a Chris Kirk, he's 8% owned over here um, at, compared to, say, Taylor Pendrith, who's 15% owned. So we have to figure out whether if the difference in value score is enough to overcome this, you know, double, you know, double the ownership. Okay. Um, that's something that you use ownership for. And then you, again, can look down and see, okay, this guy, Cameron Young, he's 16% owned, but he's rates all the way down there. Probably would not want to play him. Probably opt for something, uh, one of these other guys. And that's kind of what you do here. So let's first, let's rate these guys I mentioned. Let's do, uh, let's do it points per dollar. Now let's just go sheets value score. And you just kind of look and see what's up. You know, you're, first of all, you do have Russell Henley, who is the top rated guy. And not surprisingly, he's 21% owned. You know, it's very tough to really put one over on the public. You can't get the, it's very rare you get a, like the, the top two or three guys even that are, and, either of them being extremely low owned in golf. I get it more of it than in some of the other sports though, especially when you get like a real good looking 7,400 guys. Sometimes I can get that, 
Um, like, for example, this Chris Kirk play at 9%, and these other 7,400s down here at 6%, those are, you don't get all that too often. Okay? But what you have to do is probably fade stuff like this, like Brian Harmon at 20, uh, 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 Aberg at 23, something like that. So, so what we're looking at here is Russell Headley, best play, uh, you know, close to the top own, but not necessarily the top own. And the difference between him and the second place guy is pretty, pretty severe as far as my ratings go. So I think Henley's a pretty good, solid place to start. And now I'll tell you right now, if you do that, probably not going to get, be able to play these other two guys, which is, which is fine. Probably didn't want to anyway, right? Because their ownership. So we put in uh, Russell Henley and now we're at 8,000 a person. We're not going to be able to play the nine Ks, which is totally fine. Because again, probably too highly owned relative to their chances. Um, uh, a bird is going to be a tough day, but whatever it is, what it is. The next thing I kind of like to do, just kind of for fun, is just to see, you know, if I can just put in the top six guys in the lineup. Okay, and I know we're not going to because be able to because we're going to have a bird going to get in the way at ten nine. But let's just do it anyway. So we'll put in Henley. Pendrith, and we're going to go over Pendrith, Cole, uh, Connors, Aberg, and uh, Spawn. So obviously, it's not going to work. You have 5,100 you have to get rid of. So then you just kind of go through and see okay, which is the priorities you have to get rid of. So Certainly Aberg at 10-9. You know, we don't we don't probably don't even want him anyway. It's too highly owned and he's costing us too much salary. So we can just immediately go take him out and replace him with uh with one of these cheaper guys. So considering that Chris Kirk is 80 is is number one cheaper, number two lower owned than Svensson, we can start with that. So let's put in, let's take off uh Aberg. And put in Chris Kirk. Uh, now we're only twenty one hundred behind. That's 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 really not bad. Um, so let's see what other priority guys we're kind of looking at here. Um, you have Svensson and you have Batia. So eighty six hundred, eighty one hundred, and then you can play Shank. I know we'll be able to get to Shank and Gip. That should be pretty easy uh, by just taking out one of these other guys. But I wonder if we can get to Svensson and or Baccio. Well, the first thing we're going to have to do is take out the next most expensive guy. So Connors or Cole, which is the guy that's going to have to go? Well, uh, Connors is 19%. Cole is 16%. Looks easy enough for me. And he's more expensive. So we take Connors out. And now we are down to 7,800. So now we can play either of those guys. And have a good looking lineup here. So that would be Shank, Gim, whatever. You can get down to Davis Thompson even. He's fantasy points is actually let is actually a little bit more. So you could play Davis Thompson at only 10%. And that could be one way to play. Okay. And it's using the projections and we're getting a little bit lower on in, in certain spots, but playing, you know, the good plays mostly. And hand building lines in golf using my sheets is usually pretty easy. But just for fun, let's say we're going to get rid of Cole also. Um, let's say we get rid of Cole and we wanted to play those other guys, like Baccia, for example. Can we play Baccia and Svensson, for example? I think you can. So this is another way you could play. Um, either of these ways makes sense. But so again, like in, in golf, and that's what's kind of alluring is that you can play a lot of guys that you want to play with, with very little stress. But the question is always, what type of ownership do you want to fight for? Now, I can't imagine that Baccia is only going to be 9%. But according to this, it is. So we'll play Baccia and Kirk together. Um and I think this is probably a pretty good lineup as well. All right. Um, so next thing I want to do, let's let's assign these for now. 
And then just, just so we don't forget, let's do, uh, who, what was the other one? We took out Bacci on Svensson and we placed him, who's that, with Cole and Thompson, right? That's another thing. So there's a, there's a bunch of kind of, these are, and these are very, I won't say low risk contests, but low risk lines, but pretty much. I mean, we're making, we're, we're making the best plays. Okay. Um, let's save those. So we don't forget. All right. So let's uh, go into Saberson and build some, uh, some Saberson uh, lineups. Let me pause for just a second. Okay. So let's um, upload our projections. And we have them in a separate file, so we'll put that in here. And we'll build 150 lineups, and we just see what we get. I can make any changes. We're actually, to be specific, we're not building 150 lineups. We're building uh, 5,000 lineups, um, so that when we want to make changes, it's got like a pool of lineups to kind of draw from. You know, if we just build 150 then there's like, you know what I mean? Like then you have to rebuild if you want to make any changes. So we'll build a full 5,000. Um, and the other thing we can do is we can start our contest sims, uh, our contest sim uh, settings here. Let's see, where is that? Settings. Why can't I find my, really not good with these settings here. No. Where are my contest sims? Where are they? I know there's somewhere. Fine, we'll find them in a minute. You should can set this up beforehand. Um, we set builds. It's a little annoying. So it would be here. No. It's in here somewhere. What's ooh, what's this? Is this is it. No. In settings. So what happened to the So funny, I know you guys are looking at this sheet. Just do this. Just click this. I, what are you doing? You just got to click this one thing and the contest sim thing will show up. For some reason, I just can't get it to show up right now. There's a trick. I can I can do it later. And I presume that we're going to get something very similar, by the way. Because we're, we're, the first thing we're going to do is going to rate these by Sabre score. And Sabre score is kind of a... It's it's a it's a method of ranking that takes into account to some degree upside ownership and things like that. It's a little bit better than just um, than just you know the, the optimal lineup based on median projections. So let's just see. Um, well, first of all, where are my ownerships? All right, so we rate these by saber score by contest with ten thousand to fifty thousand. And, ooh, Doug Gim, he shows up a little more near the top than I was expecting. But all these other guys were kind of guys that I mentioned. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I want to save these to my contest. But actually, the first thing I would want to do, I probably want to change to Min Uniques 3 or something like that, just to, just to reduce the variance just a little bit. Okay? Um, so let's put these in. We'll put these in uh, Save to Contests download the template file and then we'll upload it to uh, upload this here and we're just going to add this to the uh, to the sand trap I guess it's here boom and then the other thing I want to do is let's uh but it's not letting me do a contest in here. That's maybe that's why it wasn't. I guess it's not enabled for some reason, which is a little annoying. Is there one other thing I'm missing? Let me just see one thing. Did I not do it in sim mode somehow? Let's see. That's possible. Let's see what happens. No, I didn't do it. I did it right. Sim mode. There it is, contest sim settings, right? That's something. Add contest sim. Uh, we should be able to do it from the other, the other spot, but let's uh, put this in here. So to run a contest sim, we have to kind of look at the lobby. We don't shouldn't always have to do this, but it usually saves it for you. But in this case, we'll 
pull it up here. Sports. Not easy. They're not making it easy on me. 14,100 people in the sand trap. Okay. 14,100 people in the sand trap. Uh, how much for first? 33% for first. Put that in there. And then we'll just put this running. 33% for first. That's going to be the sand trap. And then we will add another one for the snowman. Let's see what that is. The snowman is 375 people for entrance and 33%. And again, what, the reason we're doing this is so that the contest simulator can tailor the lineup specifically to the contest that we're playing. And then we'll also do the driver, just down here somewhere. 50K driver, 277 people. Driver, 277 people. And save settings. So now we're going to run the contest sim. And maybe hope to do a little bit better. You know, now what we're going to do is we're going to, again, tailor these lineups specifically to the presumed field of lineups that SaberSim is projecting for the rest of the field. Now, again, one issue, plenty of them, but it's only using the SaberSim ownership assumptions to calculate this field of lineups that we are comparing our lineups to. So if that becomes an issue, then this whole contest sim is kind of screwed. But let's just see what we come up with. Uh, we we'll look at sand trap. We will sort by, I guess, win ray. We do ROI too. And it's not all that much different. Okay, fair enough. So we are just going to just load these in, save to contest. We'll do this one for the sand trap. And then we will do. Snowman. Okay, put those in here. And we'll use the driver also for the same sentence. It's fine. All right, so let's uh, download these. Whoa, we'll download two entries. Hmm. What am I doing wrong? What is it that I'm doing wrong? All right, let's try this again. Mega snow, we're going to just put them all. Cool. Two lines will be duplicate. Okay, that's fine. I have a feeling that something is off, but that's, I'm, I'm going with this for now. Again, later tonight, I mean, everything's going to be a lot tighter. The ownership projection is going to be a lot tighter. But this is at least a good set to start with. Let's just take a look and see what this looks like on board. Uh, yeah, okay, and lead time. And then you could also, you could look in Saber Sim at your exposures. Henley, Pendrith, Cole, whatever, or you could do it from, you could do it from, uh, from DraftKings as well. In any case, uh, no matter which way we did it, we're still getting the same good golfers that we analyzed from the sheets. Um, and, uh, Golf models are usually pretty strong, so we'll see how it works. We'll do a final lineup build a little bit later tonight. Maybe I'll do showdown. Uh, probably not. That'll do it. Good luck, everybody.